Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Pearson, your elementary ELL teacher. Today we're going to talk about chapter 10 from Bud Not Buddy and the imagery and comprehension from that chapter. So you will need to have already read and or followed along to chapter 10 because we're going to dive deeper into the imagery. For this lesson, you will need a piece of paper and a pencil because at the end, you're gonna challenge yourself and answer this comp these comprehension questions for chapter 10. Or actually, it's just one comprehension question. At the beginning of the chapter, Bud uses a lot of imagery to describe the country. What imagery does he use? Give at least two examples, along with the type of figurative language each is. So you're going to say, first, Bud describes the country by saying, so give me one way he describes the country. And then tell me what type of figurative language it is. This figurative language type is, and you can choose metaphor, personification, or sound imagery. And second, Bud describes the country by saying, so give me a second way he describes the country. And you're going to say, this figurative language type is, and you can say metaphor, personification, or sound imagery. Choose one of them. So here's our learning target. I can use pictures and context clues to help me understand figurative language and imagery like metaphors and personification from chapter 10 of Bud Not Buddy. And also I can analyze and write about the figurative language and and imagery in the text. Success criteria, that means how will you know you're successful at using pictures and context clues to understand the figurative language? And also how will you know you're successful at analyzing and writing about it? Well, here are our steps to success. Number one, I will read and or listen and follow along to the chapter. Two, write down one to two examples of figurative language or imagery for each of the page or slides I show you whenever you see that pencil. And then four, answer the comprehension question in writing using the figurative language examples. So at least two. So again, here's the man holding up his ear. So listen, Bud uses a lot of figurative language when he talks. Figurative versus literal. He ran like the wind would be figurative language. And literal language would be he ran fast. So again, imagery is the use of descriptive language to appeal to the five senses. Our sense of sight or what you see, our sense of smell, our sense of touch or what you feel, taste and sound or what you hear. So. You're going to read and listen to chapter 10 and Bud's country imagery. And then you're going to write each type of figurative language shown. You're going to actually write down the name. Is it a simile or is it a metaphor? What type of figurative language does he use? And then you're going to write down the example. You're going to write one to two examples up for each slide. And then finally, you will have three to four imagery and figured examples to choose from to answer the comprehension question. So again, imagery, the use of descriptive language to appeal to the five senses. We can, what do we see, smell, touch, taste, and what do we hear, the sound, Bud's country imagery. Here's the page read and follow along to this page together. Out here in the country, the sounds were loud too, but what I was hearing was the sound of bugs and toady frogs and mice and rats playing a dangerous, scary kind of hide and go seek where they rustle around and try to keep away from each other or try to find each other. Instead of being tagged and called it, like the way human beings play the game. Out here, the ones that got, got, got ate up. 
Every step I took toward Grand Rapids, I could hear the sounds of mouse bones and bug skeletons being busted up by the teeth of bigger things. So Bud is walking along the in the country on a road. And this is how he describes the sounds that he's hearing. Out here in the country, the sounds were loud too. But what I was hearing was the sound of bugs and toady frogs and mice and rats. They're playing a dangerous, scary kind of hide and go seek where they rustle around and try to keep away from each other or try to find each other. Instead of being tagged and called it like the way human beings play the game, out here, the ones that got got or tagged got ate up. Every step I took toward Grand Rapids, I could hear the sounds of muscle bone, mouse bones and bug skeletons being busted up by the teeth of bigger things or bigger animals. So write this down. Personification. This is the, your chance to write down the type of figurative language personification. It's a very long word. It has the word person in it as a clue. Personification. The sun was peeking through the clouds. So the sun was acting like a person or a human. Personification is giving human qualities to a thing or an idea. Personification. So make sure you write that figurative language down. And here is our quote. I was hearing, I was hearing was the sound of bugs and toady frogs and mice and rats playing a dangerous, scary kind of hide and go seek. Instead of being tagged and called it, like the way human beings play the game, out here, the ones that got got, got ate up. So the sounds of bugs and fries and the Bugs, fry, frogs, mice, and rats were playing a dangerous, scary kind of hide-and-go-seek. So he hears the, the mice and the bugs and the frogs and the rats. They are playing a dangerous type of hide-and-go-seek. So... When he's out in the country, what does he hear? He hears frogs, mice, rats, and bugs playing a dangerous kind of hide-and-go-seek. So they're playing hide-and-go-seek, so that's personification. You could probably also call it a metaphor. They're comparing the sounds to hide and go seek. So make sure you write that down. Personification, the animals are playing hide and go seek, but it's a dangerous one. And here's the word metaphor. So write down metaphor. A metaphor is a comparison of two things. You do not use the words like or as in a metaphor. For example, the racer was a lightning rod coming across the finish line. So here's our quote. Every once in a while, a couple of cats would give out the kind of howls and yowls that would make the hair on your neck jump up. If you were a human being and your heart turned into a little cup of shaky yellow custard, if you were a mouse. So he could hear the cat's yowls and howls, and that would make the hair jump. So that's actually personification. So the cat's howls and yowls would make the hair on your neck jump up. The hair is acting like a human. And then the heart would turn into a cup of shaky yellow mustard. So that's the metaphor. So if you were a mouse and you heard the cat's howls and yowls, 
your heart would turn into a shaky cup of yellow custard. So make sure you write down those one or two of those examples so you can hear the cat's howls and yowls and it makes the hair jump up or the, the heart of the mouse turns into shaky yellow custard. Every step I took toward Grand Rapids, I could hear the sounds of mouse bones and bug skeletons being busted up by the teeth of bigger things. So with every step, he could hear the mouse and bug skeletons being busted up by bigger animals. So it's a sound imagery. So what does he hear? He hears the mouse skeletons and the bug skeletons being chomped. All right, time for chapter 10 comprehension question. At the beginning of the chapter, Bud uses a lot of imagery to describe the country. What imagery does he use? Give, a, give at least two examples along with the type of figurative language that it each is. So you could say first, Bud, dis, Bud describes the country by saying, and this figurative language type is, so write it in metaphor, personification, or sound imagery. And what's a second way that he describes the country? Second, Bud describes the country by saying, and this figurative language type is either metaphor, personification, or sound imagery. So push pause and fill in two imagery examples of how he describes the country. And tell me what those two examples are. Are they a metaphor, personification, or sound imagery? And when you're finished, push play. At the top of your paper, time to reflect. I can analyze and write about the descriptive language in the text. If you give yourself a four, I could teach this lesson. I easily answered the comprehension question and wrote three imagery examples along with the figurative language type. Or you answered it and gave two imagery examples with each figurative language type. Give yourself a three. Or I answered the comprehension question with one imagery example. Or I answered the one part of the question but did not include the figurative language type. So how do you think you did? Four, three, two, or one. All right, everyone, thank you for discussing chapter 10 with me and Bud's use of imagery. Have a great day.